And hello. Let's take a look at the basics of setting up your file for milling in Rhino and RhinoCam. And what we're going to go over is how to actually establish the size of your material, how to locate <clears throat> 000, and how to build the proper tool for milling. So we're going to need two pallets here. We're going to need our machining operations browser, and we're going to need our machining objects browser. So our first step, of course, is to make sure that we have the right host processor set up. In this case, the Techno ISIL host processor. We want to make sure that we're using the regular Techno ISIL and not the Techno ISIL in millimeters. So Techno ISIL it is, and hit OK. Next, we need to assign the size of the stock material that we're going to work with. You remember that we built this or I built this piece of material in Rhino, this big, huge box. And it's always in your best interest to oversize the piece of material you want to work with. Um, if I'm milling something that is as big as the objects we see inside of here, you want to have meat around this so that we can clamp it down to the CNC bed and just in case your measurements are slightly off. So I've got a stock piece here of 48 inches by 48 inches by 2 inches. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into stock. I'm going to go to box stock. And you'll see that because I've tested this out before, I already have my dimensions set. So the length is going to be 48 inches, the width is going to be 48 inches, and the height is going to be 2 inches. So I'm going to hit OK. Now you'll notice there's kind of a milky milky color to that or milky shade to that red now. If I turn off my material layer, you'll see that I now have this sort of beige-ish looking box. That is my blank material. You'll also notice that if I zoom out here, I have these three coordinate arrows telling me my Z, Y, and X axis, as well as where 000 is located. We talked about that when we were discussing how to set up a material for milling. I can make sure that that's all correct by clicking on the Align tab and going to Set World CS. So I can now move the 000 point simply by entering that information in. So I could type, you know, that I want 0 and the X to be a 10, and you'll see as soon as I type 10, it starts to move over. If I type Y Mo 15, now 0 is moved up there, but I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to set Y to 0, I want to set X to 0. And so when we zoom in, we can see that 0, 0, 0 is now located nice and precisely in that corner. And I'll click on OK there. Now, <clears throat> just so you understand, we do have another feature within Align, which is Align Stock. I showed you how to do things in a very manual fashion where you built the overall material yourself and then you centered the piece inside of that material. You can actually align your piece to be cut <clears throat> within a piece of blank material by using these features here. Southwest refers to the southwest corner, southeast refers to the southeast, so on and so on and so on. But for what we're doing, it's in our best interest to be really analog about this and to build everything ourselves. That's basically all we need to do in terms of setting up the um, blank material itself to be milled. What we need to do now is we need to actually specify what type of tool we're going to be working with to mill um, our panel right here. You'll see that you know, within the tool tabs I can create, edit a new, or edit a tool. So I'm going to click on that create edit tools button. I'm going to bring up this dialog. You'll see there are a whole bunch of predefined tools that we can work with. The most common mill bits that you'll work with are ball mills and flat mills. And so for what we're going to be doing, we're going to use a flat mill. So I'm going to click on the flat mill button. You'll see I have all these parameters to enter, including the tool diameter, the shoulder length, the flute length, the tool length, shank diameter, holder length, and holder diameter. Holder diameter, holder length, and shank diameter refer specifically to 
Well, actually, holder length and holder diameter refer to um, our machine itself. Everything else is information that's variable dependent upon what it is you want to do. So for our holder diameter, I'm going to enter a value of 2 inches. Holder length, I'm going to enter a value of 1 inch. Now, this tool information is going to be dependent upon the type of tool you're working with. And um, for what we're doing in class, you'll be given um, the actual data to enter. But just so we can see what this looks like, I'm going to set my shank diameter, which is the overall diameter of the bit, to uh, 0.5 or 1 half inch. I'm going to set the tool length, which refers to the overall length as it comes out of the holder or call it. I'm going to set that to 3 inches. <clears throat> the shoulder length, the shoulder length refers to the overall length of the area where the fluting is contained, including the approach to the fluting. I'm going to set that for 2 inches, and I'm going to set the actual, well, the tool diameter is set to 0.5, and the, oops, there we go, screwed that up. Shoulder length is set to 2, the flute length is going to be set to 1.75, and the tool diameter is going to be set to 2. As you can see, we get this very crude but effective representation of what that tool looks like. This is also helpful for us later when we, um, when we actually simulate the tool paths um, in RhinoCam. We want this thing to be as accurate as possible so we can see if there's any chance of our piece colliding with our material. In terms of the material of the bit, the bits that we're working with for the most part are going to be carbide bits. In terms of the number of flutes, you're going to have at least one flute in your bit. You can have many, many more. Um, the sort of standard for us is one and two flutes. So that's two flutes for that. I don't need to worry about any of this information. We do not have coolant at all. Before I hit save to this tool, I want to go to feeds and speeds. This refers to the speed or RPM of the bit itself, how fast that's going to turn. And then we have all of these different feed rates, including plunge, which refers to the bit traveling down in the z-axis towards the material. We have approach speed, so how fast it approaches the piece, how fast it engages the piece, how fast it cuts the piece, how fast it retracts, and its departure information. For our techno mill, we like to keep every single one of these, with the exception of cut, uh, at the same speed, and that would be 75 inches per minute. 75 inches per minute for approach, 75 for engage, 75 for retract, and 75 for departure. When it comes to cut, this is going to be based on a couple of factors. This is going to be based on the material you're cutting into, how deep you're cutting into that material, the width of your bit, the, the diameter of your bit, and the speed at which your spindle is rotating. We have This is referred to typically as chip load and we have a sheet that will be given to you that um, has a little matrix that describes proper numbers. What I'm going to do is enter 17,000 RPM for its speed and for its cut rate I'm going to enter 500 inches per minute. Now we're all set up at this point so I want to save as a new tool and there it is, it shows up as flat mill one right there. I can rename that if I want to, and sometimes that can be helpful. So I'm going to set that up as 0 0.5 flat. And so now I have the tool that I need to cut with, and I have the blank material established for cutting. In our next video, we're going to take a look at the generation of um, our first three-dimensional operation to cut holes into our material.